Endotherapy comprises four important points. Endotherapy for pancreatic ductal stones. Endotherapy for pancreatic ductal structures. Endotherapy for benign biliary structures. And endotherapy for pancreatic cyst. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Now coming to endotherapy, this is one of the important aspects. Even though we are surgeons, we might be asked these questions sometimes. So I am going to touch some important aspects of endotherapy for you. Endotherapy comprises four important points. Endotherapy for pancreatic ductal stones. Endotherapy for pancreatic ductal structures. Endotherapy for benign biliary structures. And endotherapy for pancreatic cyst. These are the four aspects in which endotherapy can be done for chronic pancreatitis. So how these endotherapy works? So these are the following things which we should understand. What are the things associated with long term pain relief like more than 2 years of pain relief following endoscopic therapy? If you are doing endoscopic therapy then when we should expect a good long term pain relief these are the points. First is location of obstructive calcification in head. So if you have a chronic pancreatitis patient like this there are two sites of obstruction if there is in head and there is in tail or mid body. Okay. If you can clear up completely the head, then only these patients will have long term pain relief. Understood? If the obstruction in chronic pancreatitis is not in head, if the obstruction is in mid body here because of some stone, then clearing this stone or clearing this obstruction with endotherapy is very difficult. If that does not happen, then endotherapy is going to fail. Okay. So, obstruction in head, which can be dealt very well with endotherapy is one of the factors by which you can determine yes this patient might benefit for endotherapy. So if you have a patient of chronic pancreatitis, if you have two patients of chronic pancreatitis, one is having obstruction in head, other is having obstruction in mid body. The chances that patient will have long term pain relief with endotherapy will be with patient who has obstruction in head as compared to the patient who has obstruction in mid body. That is the concept. Okay. Second is short duration of disease and low frequency pain attacks before endotherapy. So if the patient has a long standing history, if the patient is already on a long standing painkillers, if the patient is on opiates as I said, then the chances of endotherapy causing complete pain relief are very low. If you can achieve a complete main pancreatic duct stone clearance, then only you can expect a long term pain relief. If you are just causing partial clearance and rest of the stones are small, they might come out or they might be kept as it is if you believe in that therapy or that philosophy then it is not going to help. A complete clearance is going to give better long term outcome in endotherapy and also as I said discontinuation of alcohol and tobacco during follow up. These are the most important aspects on which you can decide that endotherapy can really give pain relief to the patients. Now factors that are favoring successful stone clearance by endotherapy. Now, you will have calcifications. So, what are the factors you should look after before sending your patient to your endotherapy colleagues so that you can expect a good stone clearance. If the stones are 3 or less, if the location of stone is in head or proximal body, if there is absence of stricture, if the stone size is less than 1 cm or absence of impacted stone. You can read important uh, one by one, you can understand these. Okay. So, if the stone volume is less, naturally clearance will be better. If the stone clearance is better, the pain relief is going to be far, far better. Right? Location of stone in head and mid proximal body in which the chances of clearing all these stones are more. Okay. If you clear up complete stone, then only pain relief will be better. Okay. Now, this is important. Absence of stricture downstream the stone. So, if you have a chronic pancreatitis like this, if there is a stricture in duct here, so this is the duct, there is a stricture here and then there is a again duct ahead and if there are stones here, just above the stricture, here is a stricture and there are stones here. So clearance of these stones with this stricture is very difficult. Even if you clear up, if the stricture persists, the pain is not going to go off. You should have a stricture free pancreatic duct, you should have a pancreatic duct which is free of stone as well as free of strictures, then only you can expect a good long term pain relief with endotherapy.
Size of stone also matters. A stone size less than 10 mm. Chances of removing those stones are far, far more as compared to the stone which are like 1 or 1.5 or 2 cm. And again, absence of impacted stone is one of the th factor which determines whether a stone clearance can be endoth with endotherapy can be done or not. So, endotherapy for pancreatic stones, as I said, aim should be decompression of duct relieving all the intraductal hypertension. And this decompression can be achieved with what? Number one, complete clearance of stone, complete stone clearance. And number two, absence of stricture, right? So endotherapy, if you are planning, you should have a goal that all the stones should go off and the stricture should not be there to get complete decompression. And why complete decompression? You will get a long-term pain relief. So what are the different aspects of stone therapy? Number one, sphincterotomy, which is very rarely done. Just by doing pancreatic sphincterotomy, you are not going to get complete stones outside. ESWL, this has actually revolutionized or this has actually changed the management of chronic pancreatitis a lot. Endotherapy success is very, very significantly high if you are doing endotherapy with ESWL. Intraductal lithotripsy, again a very complex and complicated procedure rarely done and pancreatic duct stenting. Just putting a stent in pancreas is not going to help until unless you clear up the duct and clear up the stricture. So, stone fragmentation, ESWL. ESWL causes stone fragmentation. Okay. So, in which cases you don't need ESWL, you can just go in and balloon sweep and remove all the pancreatic ductal stones. So, if the stone are less than 4 millimeter, small stones, small number, number of stones are also small and stone located in head and body. If there are stones located here towards the tail, you cannot pull those stones out of pancreas like that. So, the stone should be less than 4 millimeter. The stone should be less in number and stone should be in head and proximal body. So, you won't need fragmentation. You can directly go for ERCP, do a balloon sweep and remove all the stones. ESWL. What does ESWL does? The patient is made to lie down on a table and there is a shock wave lithotripsy which the shocks are given based on a fluoroscopic image. The shocks are given to the stone. You identify the site of stone based on fluoroscopy or ultrasound. And then a uh, extracorporeal shock wave is given as it used to be given for urology stones. So by doing that, you make the stone fragmentation. A large 2 cm or 1 cm stone can be converted to small fragments. And then these fragments can be pulled out through pancreatic duct. So these are useful when intraductal stones are more than 4 mm. If there are stones which are located above the stenosis and large stone located in head. So, if there is a large stone located in head, ESWL definitely helps in causing the stones to break, in pulverizing the stones, making them like sand and then those stones are removed. So, what is the protocol for ESWL? The pancreatic calculi with pain as a dominant symptom is the patient which is selected for this. Imaging is done in form of EUS, MRCP and then ERCP to exactly locate where the stones are. Nowadays, ERCP is not done. Nowadays, they rely more on EMRCP, large ductal calculi in head and body. If they are radio opaque, then ESWL fragmentation is done and make uh, and they try to make the stone less than 3 millimeter and then ERCP and stone clearance is done. If they are radiolucent stone, which are very rare, radiolucent stone in pancreas are very rare, then what they do is they put a stent in pancreas like this, a naso pancreatic stent and then they inject a contrast and locate the site of stones and at those stones they give shock they pulverize the stone make them sand and then they take it out so when we look into the literature they have seen that more than 90 percent of stone gets cleared with less than three sessions of eswl success rate is 75 to 100 percent ductal clearance is also uh, uh, depending on the expertise but pain relief is seen in 42 percent complete pain relief is seen in 42 and partial pain relief is seen in 95% of the patients. Now, why there is a partial pain relief? As I said earlier, the ductal clearance or stone clearance is going to cure only the plumbing problem. That's why there is a partial pain relief with endotherapy. Endotherapy can never compete with surgery in terms of pain relief. The reason being, in surgery, we also tend to cause or we also tend to remove the inflammatory pancreatic tissue in most of the cases. That's why the inflammation gets decreased 
and that is the reason pain relief in surgery is far far better as compared to endotherapy. Complete pain relief is seen in 42% of the patients. As you can see here, this is a radio lucent stone. Okay, this radio lucent stone is then given shock waves, and over a period of time, you can see this complete clearance has occurred. You can see the contrast which is going nicely into the duct. So that is how ESWL works. Complications are acute pancreatitis sometimes biliary or pancreatic septis and sometimes they may lead to gastric submucosal hematoma. These are various studies which have shown that pain relief in patients with uh, ESWL is nearly 60 to 80 percent. They have not mentioned partial or complete pain relief but this is what they have mentioned. The pain relief is in the range of 60 to 80 percent. But if you look at follow-up it is only a two month, two year follow-up at max. Okay. So, it is okay. It can be one of the ways in which you treat chronic pancreatitis if the patient is not willing for surgery or it could be one of the step up approach. Again, you just start with endotherapy. If you get a good pain relief, if patient is happy, patient is eating well, well and good. If there is no good pain relief even after endotherapy, then you can refer the patient to surgery. Now coming to pancreatic duct strictures, we have seen how the stones are managed. The stone size less than 4 millimeter, you directly go in, take out the stone. Stone size more than 4 to 5 millimeter stone which is impacted, a large stone, mainly the stone in head and body, they can be managed with ESWL, fragmentation of stone and then removing them with the pancreatic duct uh, ERC. Okay. Now coming to strictures, management of MPD strictures include pancreatic sphincterotomy, stricture dilatation and then stenting. So you do what? You do sphincterotomy, you enter with a balloon, you dilate the stricture with a balloon and then place a stent inside the pancreatic duct. Now with this stenting what has seen is stenting is possible in nearly 98% and immediate pain relief is seen in nearly 90% of the patients. At follow up nearly 70% of the patients continue to have pain. Now why just stenting does not help because it is a fibrotic stricture. Chronic pancreatitis is an evolving disease over a period of time whatever you dilate you keep a stent you remove the stent again that stricture is going to recur. As soon as the stricture recurs stricture recurs patient starts getting pain. That is why pancreatic duct stenting in a long run has not shown to be very much effective for relieving pain. This is one important point which you can understand. Stenting may be used as a temporary drainage procedure to predict symptomatic improvement. If a patient has symptomatic improvement or a significant relief on stenting, then patient will do far far better with surgery. It could be just a procedure by which you can determine whether patient will have good pain relief after surgery or not. If the patient does not improve at all with stenting, then that is a bad surgical candidate. If a patient improves significantly with stenting, that patient is a very good surgical candidate for stenting. Stents for MPD strictures can be 7, 8.5 or 10 French. Multiple stent placement has also been uh, reported to have a good stricture resolution. Complete symptomatic relief is not always achieved as I said. And then you have to do three monthly assessments.